As, as is my usual custom, welcome to everybody, including the ISD officers. When I, when I sat down on Tuesday to start writing a speech for this event, I began to struggle with what I could say to you because I seem to say the same things at all of these events. Uh, I don't have the technical data that Leong Zhe Hien and Roy Neng can draw on to critique policies so uh, deeply as they do. So I tend to take shelter in the more uh, esoteric or meta issues. The issues that override the way our country is run. So, in fact, I have struggled until this afternoon to think of what to say, and as you can see, I don't have a speech prepared. And I tell you, it is rather frightening to stand in front of so many people and don't know what the hell I'm going to say to you. But as I was walking around earlier, uh, a lady came up to me and she was talking about various uh, uh, policy issues. And then she said, Singapore is a Kosong country. There is no justice, no human rights, and no democracy. Now, if you examine the nature of that heartfelt comment, we begin to understand what's happening in 2014. In the first 30 or so years when we had uh, the first Prime Minister with us, that man believed in social control. But he, 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 he wasn't a, a, a bully in the way Stalin was. He actually believed that it was genuinely more effective to control the population through various means. And he did it in two uh, uh, equally effective means. Firstly, by controlling what we said and shared and thought uh, about things. And then secondly, by being able to punish those whom he couldn't control. So even uh, in the crowd today, we have people who were imprisoned under the Internal Security Act. Mr. Jagatnam's father, on the other hand, though not in prison, uh, uh, was beset with so many defamation suits. Roy Nung, another one, Dr. Chi, uh, another casualty of the system. Like father, like son. Like father, like son. <laughs> now, what this essentially did to us as a community is exactly what that lady said to me earlier. If you think of that word kosong, it has essentially hollowed out our community. So when Lee Kuan Yew coined the phrase economic digits, he knew exactly what he was talking about. We became people who had zero humanity within us. We became people who had nothing of the human integrity, the human autonomy, the human self-respect that you need if you're going to rise to the full heights of our potential. That was hollowed out from us. But, but, with the advent of the internet, and certainly with the advent of Hong Lim Park, and for that we must continue to thank the work of Dr. Chi and his colleagues to ensure that Hong Lim Park became a place for citizens to speak. And we must never allow, we must never allow the media to let us forget that. The media may have demonized Dr. Chi Soon Juan. We must not allow that to remain in our minds. So, because of the internet, because of Hong Lim Park, what started happening to us? We began to regenerate that which makes us human beings. We began to regenerate uh, the knowledge and the perspectives and the ideas and the insights that uh, uh, help us to negotiate uh, uh, living in community and help us to engage with one another and, if you think about it, it is on the basis of information 
that communities improve and develop. So, I think today's event, together with the latest defamation suit, together with the obfuscation and double speak that we heard in Parliament this week from the PM's shock troops, who told us that he couldn't, they couldn't uh, 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 have as deep a conversation on the CPF as we would like. It is coincided quite neatly with this business at the NLD uh, on Tuesday because throughout history there are two types of people whom we have uh, observed. One, the group of people who when they are confronted with new information, the immediate response is to crush it down. And the second group of people who when they are confronted with new information is to say, hmm, what is this? I want to know more. It's essentially those who respond to new information by raising their eyebrows and saying, tell me more. And those who uh, frown when they hear information and say, how can I control this? How can I obliterate this? And it's happened throughout our years. If you, ha those of you who live in landed properties, you know that every few days you have to weed your, your garden. And it's a tedious process because no matter how uh, effectively you weed the garden, two or three days later you have to come back and weed it again and it's a constant and consistent activity. And I don't know how many of you all have been to Borobudur, the temple in uh, uh, Indonesia. Obviously someone forgot to weed the garden there for many centuries. And today the weeds have grown and split the temples in two and they have become huge trees. The temples now are subsidiary to the trees. Now, people who try to control information are like the gardeners. They like a neat and easily explained worldview. And so they keep trying to uh, weed the garden because without it, when the uh, weeds grow into huge trees, you change the entire structure and architecture of the community. But it is that structure and architecture that builds the community. It is that constant debate and discussion like what we are having here today, that helps us to improve. You remember in 1500 and something, when Galileo discovered that it wasn't the sun that moved around the earth, but the earth that moved around the sun. What did the people in power of that time do to him? They put him in jail and they tortured him until he was forced to say, you're right, the sun goes round uh, the earth. Yesterday, there was a book launch of the uh, autobiography of Lim Chin Ju. Lim Chin Ju is the brother of Lim Chin Siong, whom even Lee Kuan Yew himself one thought, once thought would be our first Prime Minister. And Lim Chin Ju recounted how he himself had been imprisoned under the pre prevention of present... Uh, uh, prevention of Public Security Ordinance, Preservation of Public Security Ordinance uh, and tortured in prison. So what we are facing now in 2014 uh, uh, is a new form of this weeding process. The problem now is that whereas in the past information was uh, owned and therefore uh, uh, easily controlled, you go and buy the Straits Times, put it under SPH, and then you control what your media people say. Now you have the democracy of the internet. You have the democracy of Hong Lim Park. And you have that growing spark of democracy, I'm sure, coming back into our lives. So it is a different culture, a different uh, uh, complexion that we have now in our society. And then we have to ask ourselves, as citizens, what we are going to do with that newfound power that is slowly uh, uh, filling us and slowly removing this kosong uh, sense that we have felt for so long. The power of those who ask for more information 
is essentially and uh, eventually the power that changes societies. And we must remember that. And we must also say here and to, uh, to say to all those of our friends, uh, when you criticize the methodology of our researchers, when you criticize their political objectives, what you are actually doing is criticizing the very engine of social progress. And that's uh, uh, the, the general climate that we need to welcome and the general climate from which we will go into the next elections. I'm no longer a formal party politician, as you know, but of course my sense is that if change is truly going to come to Singapore, that change cannot simply operate at the level uh, of civil society like this, but the change must find itself on the floor of the House of Parliament. And how do you do that? We heard from uh, the Law Minister this week that he is not going to activate uh, uh, Article 52A of the Constitution that will take some power from the government and return it to us through the parliamentary votes and a referendum. Uh, uh, that's not surprising. If I had a lot of power, I would also find it difficult to give the power to someone else, particularly for a party been in power for 55 years now. But what that says to us is that any change that is generated by the political parties, by civil society, by the researchers, by the academics, must ultimately find itself on the table of parliament so that laws are changed. And one thing needs to happen for that to, to, to take place, for there to be 27 MPs on the uh, benches opposite the government. There's no uh, doubt that that is what needs to happen. Right? So I join myself with the sentiments that were expressed by Wai Fang earlier. One of the key tasks of our citizenship in the coming period is to ask ourselves individually how each of us can contribute to sending 27 people into the house. And it is not sufficient, I finish with this, it is not sufficient for us to just come to Hong Lim Park. Politics is no longer theatre. We are no longer to be entertained in the exercise of what fundamentally makes us members of this country. There is a lot of hard work ahead, and that hard work can take all sorts of uh, uh, forms. The hard work needed to organize events like this, the hard work needed to do the research that got Roy into trouble, the hard work that generates the kind of policy papers that Wai Fang referred to earlier, the hard work that provides the, the briefings and the academic research that will inform the work of the MPs and, and, and the political parties, and the money that is needed to run an effective political opposition. So each and every one of you must go home today and not just wait for the next event that Empowering Singaporeans will organize. Tomorrow, you must decide what you are going to do. You can give money to the organizations, you can donate your time, I did a small back of the envelope calculation the other day. If each of the 40% of voters gave one dollar a month for the next 18 months, we will have uh, 15 million dollars for all of civil society to work with. If each of those 40% gave two hours of their time a week, we will have in excess of the equivalent of 40 full-time workers for each of the political parties to do their work. And you can imagine what kind of uh, potential that will generate into the political sphere, but more importantly, and I leave you with this, you can imagine how terrified our leaders are going to be. That is what you need to hold on to. Thank you very much.